think if you just hit cool cool got it sweet deal all right cool so like all right so like i said guys attitude you know stop blaming the leads and focus on the dials don't worry about the appointments the appointments will come focus on getting those dials in and by dials 50 60 dials an hour if you guys don't have the dial tracker i highly recommend you get the dial tracker um, I'm sure Eagles, you guys have it, but on FFL 360, it's in the important documents. Um, Scott, if you want to touch base, and do you guys have that on your, on the Eagles website? Yeah, I think so. I'll uh, all right. put it in the chat. But get that. That's going to keep track of all your dials. Um, it, that's huge. All right. Keeping track of the dials. And to get into my day, I like to start off every dial day with 75 to 100 new leads. They're not brand new, but they're new to you. Um, that's going to give you 225 to 300 dials for the entire day. And again, don't focus on the appointments, focus on getting the activity in. Um, use the dial tracker. Keep track of all of them. If you get a hold of somebody, somebody how many appointments you have set, objections that you get, that you lose the, the client at, write it down on the back. Halfway through the day, you're going to have all that information filled out. You're going to know how many people you made contact with, how many people you didn't make contact with, how many appointments you booked, and how many people hung up on you. On the back of that sheet, you're going to have all those objections. Call your upline halfway through the day so you guys can go over some things and figure out if it's your script so we can fix the script. If it's, you know, you're just not dialing enough, you know, if you call me halfway through the day and you've only made a hundred appointments, I'm going to be like, you need more activity. So focus on your attitude and getting those dials in. Um, you know, if you find yourself struggling at all, if you just kind of out, you're just out of it, you just don't know what to do. Um, hop on YouTube, listen to training, FFL USA um, on YouTube. They have a lot of great trainings. Get on there and just submerge yourself and get used to, listening to people dial, whether that's on Zoom or in the YouTube world, just submerge yourself, get addicted to it, um, listen to their tonality. And that's a huge thing pushing forward into when you're actually dialing is your tonality and your confidence. Those two things are going to get you a lot further in regards to setting your appointments. Um, and by that, I mean, you know, if somebody enters the phone pissed off, kind of, you know, raise your your um your voice and kind of match them you know if someone's like yeah hello who's this yeah hey bob this is Corey. i'm the manager over here at the benefits office you got to match the tonality and stay level um the second you start getting excited because you've got somebody on the phone is typically a red flag and a trigger to the person on the other end when they hear you know your voice shoot up like oh hey yeah bob you know that's an automatic you know, trigger warning, like, hey, this person is trying to sell me something. You, you're coming off telemarketing. You're coming off, you know, different. So stay level the entire way. Um, and be blunt with them. Go through your script. You, like, the script's there to help you. But the script, it's just, it's just a, you know, a spot where you can go back to if you get off track. You have to be a person. You have to be a human being actually caring about these people on the other end so they know that, you, that you're human. If you read the script, you know, verbatim, like a robot, you're probably not going to book a whole bunch of appointments. And by fluent and being somebody that you, somebody that you can relate to on the other end, you just kind of ask them questions and you're clearing their schedule by asking them questions. So, you know, the script is there to help you not get you off track. But that script, do not read it verbatim. Do not step-by-step step go through it. Create that script in your own personality. So what I like to do, you know, I use final expense. So it's Bob. Yeah, hey, Bob, this is Corey. I'm with the benefits office. I'm the manager over here. I was actually just getting back to you in regards to that form that was mailed back to my office. You're still located at 123 Main Street, correct? I asked them the address right away. Have them verify that. That way I have that in my back pocket if anything goes bad during this call. Um, and then after you get into, after you get out of that, you know, if they say, hey, what is this about? Yeah, Bob, perfect. Whole reason for my call is, like I said, I'm the manager over here and we got to get you this information. Now, are you working, disabled, retired? So 
the AAA method. Now go. Now we're going into the AAA method. Acknowledge them, answer them subtly, not fully, and then ask them a question. So what that does, psychology, like in their head, you acknowledge them, you told them, hey, why you were calling, but not really. And then you ask them a question. So now that they have to think about something else and forget what they just asked you and answer the question. And you do that all the way through. Working disabled, retired. Then you go into, okay, you're disabled. Now, do you have any doctor's appointments tomorrow? Who typically drives you to those doctor's appointments? I like to ask that. Instead of asking them, hey, are you married? You know, if they have any doctor's appointments, I say, all right, do you have any doctor's appointments tomorrow? And typically, who drives you to those doctor's appointments? Now it's kind of like, hey, now you're kind of caring about them. You're wondering, you know, who's driving them. Now they're going to tell you, oh, my wife does. Or, you know, I drive myself. You know, I don't have anybody that, that can drive me. So now you eliminate a whole another question. Are you single or married? Because they just answered that question, you know, when you ask them if they have any doctor's appointments. So now you already know their schedule. They're disabled. They have no doctor's appointments tomorrow. And then I'll go into, hey, you know, Bob, are you a morning person, afternoon person? Do you like to get up early? They'll tell you. Yeah, I'm usually up pretty early. And then if they, you know, throw an objection at you, like, well, why are you asking these questions? Yeah, Bob, perfect. You know, I'm only asking these questions because I have to drop this information off to you. Now, you said you were a morning person, Bob. Would 10 o'clock work for you? Yeah, I'd be up around 10. And with objections, you know, you're going to, I can't tell you all the objections that are going to come your way, but you have to be somewhat quick enough to understand. You can't give them any time like a second at most. Um, when you get an objection, you have to be rapid fire. You have to come back. So that's where the triple A method comes in handy. You know, acknowledge them, answer them, and then ask them another follow-up question. And if you get stuck, that's what the script is for. The script is there to help you get back into the rhythm of things. But have your own personality with these scripts. Now, for me, I'm up in the Northeast. You know, we're called mass holes for a reason. A lot of people up here, you know, they're rude. You know, we are a-holes. So I respond to my people that I'm dealing with the same way that they respond to me. But down in Texas, everyone's, you know, super kind. You have to know your area and the people that you're working with in order to, you know, come up with that personality in that script. Hey, Corey. Yep. Um, so uh, I, I missed the first 15 minutes of this call. Uh, sorry about that. Um, and uh, you don't look like shoddy. So I'm not sure what happened, but um, <laughs> uh, we were going to go back and forth with like uh, objections. Do you mind if we do that? So I want to get, that'd be awesome. I want to get like anybody who has objections that um, they haven't been able to overcome or they're the worst ones that they run into that type of thing. Um, put them in the chat box. Uh, and I want to, uh, then just kind of fire them out at you. Um, okay. you know, so that way you can, they can actually hear what you say back to the person when, when they have, you know, one of these objections, I thought okay. that maybe that might be helpful for everybody. So, um, so are you ready? I'll throw, I'll throw them at you. All yeah. right. So yeah, I, I bought a policy a couple months ago. Oh, perfect, Bob. Like I said, you know, I'm the manager over here and it's my job to make sure that the agent that came out there did everything correctly and to make sure that there's no discrepancies in that policy. Um, this is a review. They're still making me come out there. Um, with everything that's happened in the world over the last 12 months, we just want to make sure everything is good to go. Now, are you working disabled or retired, Bob? That's awesome. So, dang it, now I wish I was taking notes at the same time. Um, that was that. <laughs> I like that response a lot. Um, and well, it doesn't matter anyway, cause I don't have any money. Well, perfect, Bob. You know, I deal with a lot of different, you know, budget clients. Um, like I said, I'm the manager over here. I just have to get you this information out there and show you what you qualify for. Um, I understand that you have no money, uh, but let's just take about, you know, 10, 15 minutes to see what you do qualify for. Cause we know that this is going to be important for you and your wife now are you working disabled or retired um okay how about um well i never filled anything out <laughs> i didn't fill anything out oh oh okay bob um you didn't fill anything out but obviously somebody who really loves you filled something out 
So in order for me to get this, you know, closed out and so you don't get any more phone calls, I do have to drop this off to you. Now, are you working disabled or retired? What company are you with? Well, all right, hold on. I actually haven't ever gotten that one. Um, I have a good uh, one for that one. Well, so I'd be like, I'd probably, you know, off the whim of it. Um, what company am I with? Well, you know, I'm with Family First, but the thing is, Bob, um, we don't represent just one company. We actually represent about 20 different companies because we represent a whole bunch of different clientele. And in order for me to get you the right information and show you what you qualify for, you know, I'm going to put you through, um, I'm going to put you through a bunch of different applications and qualifications to see what company fits best for you. Something along those lines. I'd probably yeah, say something like I, that. I have a pretty decent one for that. When they say, what company are you with? I say, actually, the good news is I'm a broker. So I represent basically all the major carriers. Um, so I'm going to be there for you and we can figure out who's going to be best. I like that one too. Yeah. Um, let me make sure I didn't miss anything. Anybody else have any others? Hey, Corey, I posted the dial tracker link in the chat. Oh, you did? All right, cool. I, you know, if anybody is struggling, I highly, highly recommend you. I don't recommend it. You should be doing it. If you're not doing it, you're wrong. You know, get the track, get uh, to keep track. That yeah. way your upline can help you. You know, if you want the help, if you guys are here and want the help, in order for us to help you, you have to help yourself. And this is the first step to helping yourself is keeping track, understanding where you're losing the people, where you're getting disconnected, um, how many co connects you're actually getting. Um, if you're not getting any connects, we got to figure something else out. Um, but just getting the activity in and it's all a numbers game. It's all going to play out. Um, Agreed. You know, I saw this quote the other day. Uh, you, you, you want the special kind of success, right? But what are you doing that others aren't? You know what I mean? In order for you to want that success, you have to be willing to do others, other things that other people aren't willing to do. Are you willing to dial 500, 600, 700 times a day? Are you willing to put in the activity so you can get out there and do 30, 40 appointments a week? Because yeah. if you're not, you're not going to have that overnight success. Look at Tom Brady. You know, he studied his ass off. He put in the repetition. He wasn't great overnight. He didn't wake up and piss excellence. He had to put a lot of work in there in order to become the GOAT. Same thing over here. So somebody wrote um, another objection. Said, I'm not interested in insurance. Oh, perfect, Bob. Well, I'm not really interested in you know insurance either, but it is my job to get this information out to you because you did fill it out. And I have your address here as 123 Main Street. Cool. What are the biggest objections that you guys are getting? Like, just type it in there. Getting tons of calls already. Can you remove me off the list? Yeah, perfect, Bob. I would love to remove you off the list. But in order for me to do that, you know, like I said, I am the manager here. Um, in order for me to do that, I have to get this information out to you. So in order for you to, like, stop get receiving phone calls, I have to get this information out to you. So are you working disabled or retired, Bob? Uh, call me back. Yeah, there's another one, Corey. What do you do when someone finally hangs up on you? Call them back immediately and then tell them, Hey, Bob, I think we got disconnected there. Um, <laughs> you know, if they hang up on me and then like they don't pick up again, and this is this is what separates this is what's going to separate good producers and great producers. Okay, me, if you hang up on me and tell me not to come, and you already told me your address, guess what? If I have a no show or if I have any sort of time and I'm in your area tomorrow, I'm showing up to your house and I am knocking on your door and I'm getting in there and going to talk to you. And when they answer, say, I told you not to come. Well, guess what, Bob? I told you I was coming because they make me come. I'm already here. You're here. Is that your kitchen table? Let's sit down for five minutes and go over this. I door knock. I still door knock. I actually would rather door knock all day long because it throws people off guard. They don't know when you're coming. You have their information. I love it. And I, you know, I might have 20 appointments for the, for the next two days, but I might, I might actually, I actually have 30 or 40 
because I, all those no's that I didn't, all those no's that I got or those addresses that, you know, they didn't pick up, whatever it is, I incorporate those into my run every single day. So if I have any gaps in between or if the person can't get covered, the person passed away, the person, you know, just doesn't want it. And you can kind of feel that out with more activity. You can feel out that client within the first 15 minutes, right? If you want to get up and leave because you know that that client isn't serious, they're not taking anything serious, you can walk away. But now you have three other appointments that you can go door knock and at least get into one of them. I add f anywhere from five to 15 every single day I'm out there running. So I always have appointments. I always have appointments. I'm not sitting there in my car waiting for the next appointment. I'm literally driving around, knocking on every single door that I can. It's not soliciting. So how do you organize that? How do I organize that? Well, I mean, it helps that I'm in a very small state or all three of my states are very small. Um, but I break everything down by county. I can't, like my job before this, um, I was driving around to 10, 15 different people's houses every day as a plumber. I worked the whole state of Mass, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. So I know my, my, the geography of, like, of the states. Um, get familiar with the counties. Get familiar with certain towns. I know that, hey, I've got you know, three pod tickets um, and you know, a couple wound sockets. But most of my appointments are in Providence. That's okay because they're only six minutes away from Providence. So I can leave Providence, go door knock all four in one socket, door knock all five in a socket and make it back for my next appointment in Providence. So you kind of have to know your geography, but I just throw them all. I keep them all with me in my PDF. Like I download the PDF and just download it to my phone. So I have it and just scroll through, you know, if you've got a no show, somebody just can't get covered, you know, whatever the case may be, there's plenty of time to get your activity. in. Like they're, People who are going out there with only seven appointments shouldn't be only going out there with seven appointments. You should be going out there with seven appointments and 15 door knocks, 30 door knocks, 20 door knocks. You know, when people say, oh, I only had five appointments. I say, well, okay, did you door knock? Well, no, I didn't. Okay. Well, I can't help you then. I don't, I don't know how to help you because I'm not doing that. I'm going out there with my 30 appointments for the week and another 30 door knocks in case anything happens. Can I ask yeah. something real quick? Um, I understand what you're saying, Corey, about door knocking, but in Florida, for instance, like a lot of my leads are like 45 minutes away from each other. And how do you manage that um, if you have like an hour and a half window between appointments or two hour window between appointments? So take- I can so, answer that one. Since I would, you're in a small area, Corey. <laughs> well, I mean, I, what I would, yeah. so if you want to know what I would do, after I'm done booking all my appointments and I only have a certain amount or whatever, each mm -hmm. town that you have, I would put on the map. Okay. You know, whatever, Orlando, let's just use Orlando. Cause that's the only thing I know and kiss me. So Orlando and you know, kissing me is like what? 10 minutes away. I don't know. Say it, it is. Depends on where in Orlando you are. All right. So like pull up your map, see where all your leads are in that certain area or that County, you know, if the leads are only like 10, 20, 30 minutes away from that one that didn't go through, have all those leads in that area and just go hit them all before you hit your next two hour, two and a half hour appointment away. Because one of those six, you're going to get in contact with one of those six or one of those five. I would just, you know, put it up on a map, Google Maps and figure out where those houses are in correlation to, you know, the appointments that you do have. You know, if you got to spend an extra hour doing that afterwards, that's what I would do. This is what I've got. <laughs> I've got my bin and in my bin, it has the tabs. And when somebody, unless they tell me, put me on your do not call list um, or they buy a policy, then they're, if it, one of those things didn't happen, then they're still in here. Um, so Flagler, Lake, Pinellas, Putnam, Marion County, Hernando, I have one for each county. So if I'm running a certain area that day, then I'll pull that folder and, um, well, actually I take the whole bin with me, but I'll take that folder out and see who to go knock on their door. So, um, someone else asked, um, when someone says, call me back later. 
Shadi, you there? You want to handle that one? Call me back later. Oh, yeah. Oh, usually, yeah. So call me back later. I'd be like, yeah, perfect, Bob. This is only going to take five minutes. Now, um, are you currently working right now, Bob? Is that why you can't answer the phone and talk? You know, ask. Is that way, you know, you're asking if they're working. And if they say, yeah, now you know that they work. If they say no, I say, all right, Bob, I understand that. Um, now, are you, I'm assuming you're disabled or you have a doctor's appointment. You're busy. I get it. Now, I'm the manager over here, whatever it is, I'm the manager at the benefits office. I just need, you know, about five, 10 minutes to do this review for you. And it's going to take it to two minutes. Now, are you working disabled or retired? Ask him again. I'm disabled. All right, Bob, right now, do you, are you a morning person? Do you have my doctor's appointment tomorrow? No, no, not at all. All right, Bob, it's going to be a quick set. You're going to quick set that appointment. So what I would like to do with those quick sets, I always put like a one or a two next to it because it's not going to be 100% lockdown. It's a quick set. You're telling them that you're coming over at two o'clock, but you hung up the phone after that. That's a quick set. Mark that down. Now you can add some more door knocks in that area because that one might not go. So now, Shadi, you can, how, how would you respond to that? The one thing I respond to that actually is I, um, like Corey said, quick said, so somebody tell me I'm busy. Well, hey, man, I'm busy too. My job is simple. You're still working, correct? Yes, I am. Like one, when when typically home from work? Four o'clock, perfect. I just pass home from work about four o'clock as well. Like, yes, all right, perfect. I'll tell you what, man. I'm just going to see you uh, at your home about 4.30. You still have one, two, three minutes, correct? Yep, perfect. I'll just see you then just to go over the information with you regarding that life insurance request submitted. Other than that, I'll just have a good day. Sorry to bother you at work. And I think that kept it as quick, that's like quick set, kept it as, you know, as quick as possible for the hand government. That makes sense? Yep. Very yeah. Perfect. Um, when they say they're busy, I say, oh, um, what time are you going to be free today? And they're like, um, you know, call me back at uh, six. Oh, are you, are you home at six? Yeah, I'll be home by six. They don't know that the reason I'm asking is because I'm coming over you know, or, you know, whatever your scheduled day is. Oh, okay. Well, what time are you free tomorrow? What time are you going to be uh, home and available tomorrow? You know, uh, I'll be home at, at five o'clock tomorrow. Okay, perfect. So make this real quick. Uh, 123 Main Street. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to stop by and uh, we'll go over this information tomorrow at five. All right. Sorry to bug you. Have a good day. There we go. So just basically make it a quick set. Um, yeah. With what basically Corey just mentioned, he mentioned the script, follow the script, sound like it's out of your job. Don't, uh, you know, don't get excited when they're on the phone and just, you know, focus on booking the appointment. Don't, don't start talking about insurance with them on the phone. Uh, I feel like when you do that, most likely you always love the client. Focus on booking the appointments. Once you book that appointment, your skill set comes in when you sit with them in person, right? Um, unless you're doing Zoom and, and tele-show, but that's only stepping up my expertise. But when it comes to actual appointments, all you need to focus on is book that appointment. Don't, don't talk about insurance. They can ask you questions on the phone. Every time they ask you a question, they, they can control. So what you need to do is they, uh, regain that control back. And the only way you can regain this control back by reversing the question back to them. So... Um, a little example here, talking to the client, uh, what company do you work with? Hey, I work with multiple carriers. Um, I'm a broker, independent broker, but uh, very quick. You still have one, two, three minutes though, correct? Every single time I'm overcoming any objections, I'm throwing a uh, question at them. The reason I'm throwing that question, I'm controlling that conversation, right? That's the one thing that I do a little different is I'm controlling it. I'm taking control. Every time they try to take that control, I'm actually taking it back. It becomes, it becomes basically, um, you know, give and take kind of thing, you know. Um, other than that, I mean, Corey basically covered everything. What other question we guys have here? Uh, I will say one thing too. Um, at the end of it all, um, I know the script has, you know, can you take down this confirmation code, so on and so forth. I personally like, again, you know, asking questions to clear the schedule. I also like to ask questions to paint the picture for them. Hey, should I park in the street or the driveway? Um, are the, you know, the numbers, a, 
am I able to see the numbers from the street? You know, are they on the door, mailbox, so on and so forth. Usually this will allow them to start painting the picture for you and telling you, hey, like, don't ring the doorbell. It's broken. Knock really loud. Um, once they start, like, kind of, once they visualize you coming over, all right, perfect, Bob. Like I said, I'll be there at 11 o'clock tomorrow. I'll have a beard and I'll be driving a white Subaru. So don't worry when I knock on the door. You have a nice day. I don't have them do the confirmation code nearly as much as I hear other people doing that. Once they paint that picture and visualize you coming over, get off the phone, right? They know that you're coming at a certain time. They're visualizing you coming over, get off the phone. You having them get up, go get a piece of paper, this and that in my head allows them to come up with more objections and be like, why am I doing this? You know, once they, right. you know, they tell you all that stuff, get off the phone, tell them you're coming. Peace. See you tomorrow. Okay. The the psychology behind um, a lot of it is just that if somebody said, "Hey, man, you need to go see this uh, this movie that just came out," um, whatever you know, make something up, uh, the Smith movie. It's awesome because you have no idea until the very end that Mr. Smith is actually dead the whole time. Like, what the heck? Like, why did you just tell me that? That re- now, are you going to go see the movie? Probably not. Why? Because the mystery is gone. Once the mystery right. is gone, these people are no longer interested in speaking to us. So if you answer too many of their questions, then the mystery is gone, especially the mystery is the price. So, you know, I, you give them, I've made this mistake when, when I first started. So I was like, well, yeah, just give me a ballpark figure, blah, blah, blah. This one lady I was driving and I was like, well, so, all right. It, you know, for the coverage you're talking about, it's going to be somewhere around about a hundred bucks a month. Click, hung up, blocked my number. Like, that's it. And it was stupid. I could have sat with her, you know, and built up the value and a hundred bucks a month, all of a sudden wouldn't have been anything. You know, the, the people that have no money, if their hot water heater broke tomorrow, they'd get a new hot water heater. They'd figure it out, you know? So I have no money is not really the real thing. It's that they um, don't want to allocate the money to it. So remember that the the mystery. So, you know, the more mystery, the more intrigued they are with you coming over, the better. The more value you build, by the way, because the more, you know, the more mystery you have, the more they want to really know what it is about. Yep. It becomes very interesting to them. Constantly right? planting the seed. Yep. Exactly. So, you know, that the couple of things, you know, I mean, here is all Brian and Corey. I mean, you guys still that. I mean, just you gotta build that value into, you know, on the phone. Like, you know, well, not build value, but you know what I mean, like build the um report with the client, figure out exactly when they're home. Um uh, figuring out exactly if their spouse is going to be home, make sure they're both in there. So you're not sitting with a one leg in appointment. Um, you know, all this other fun stuff. I mean, you just have to um, be very direct. Don't, don't be afraid to hurt somebody's feeling. Okay. And you want to act like you're very tired of your job, like at all the time. Don't get excited and also don't get frustrated because guess what? You can like 20 dial, no answer, you get frustrated. The 21th, the 21st dial you dial, they answer the phone, the minute you sound like <sighs> Corey, like he, he's sounding frustrated on the phone, they're gonna hang up the phone. Okay. Even though that could be an appointment for you. So that's why another thing is even don't get frustrated. You dial you $450 a day, you should be able to book at least 15 appointments. That's my tip to all of you guys. Now. Anybody had any questions, either me, Brian, or Corey? And I promise you, none of us bite, so you can ask whatever you want. Yeah, uh, Corey, when you door knock, what is your introduction? Are you just doing the uh, script? Yeah, I'll, so if I door knock, um, you know, I'll knock, like, hey, Bob? Yeah, hey, Bob. Hey, I'm the manager over at the benefits office, and I'll have the lead. I'll be like, uh, you know, we weren't, nobody was able to get a hold of you in regards to the state regulated final expense program. Uh, you got about five minutes to do a quick review real quick. That's pretty much it. You know, what, what do you mean? Yeah, Bob, you know, I see the kitchen table. You want to sit down and just, you got five minutes to talk. 
he filled out this information, showed them the form, you know, just kind of wing it, you know, just depending on the person, you know, everyone's different. So you just can't, you, you have to be able to, you know, read body language, read their temperament um, and just go with the flow. And that's what sales is all about, being able to be one step ahead. You know, you kind of have to know your next step, but in order to know that, you kind of have to know the person first. Um, it's the same thing, you know, when you're door knocking, you know, if they answer aggressively, you know, step back a little bit, be a little bit aggressive with them. Um, I don't know how many times I've been kicked, literally kicked out of a house because I won't leave the house. Um, I mean, you know, people literally saying I'm going to punch you in the face. I'm like, good. I hope you do. Because if you only cared about punching me in the face as much as you care about protecting your family, we wouldn't be having this discussion right now. And that would be. And, and men hate that. When you, when you test their, their, you know, their manliness, you know, it, that, it's game over after, 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 after that. If they start getting mad because you start calling them out on not, you know, oh, you can afford that $500 Mercedes out front, but you can't afford a hundred bucks to protect your, you know, seven-year-old. Makes sense. I didn't realize $300 in cable was uh, so much more than, you know, $250,000 of coverage for that little one right there. Didn't realize that. And I, I do it sarcastically. Uh, it, it, it all depends on the client, right? You know, if they're old, I'm not going to be doing that. But, you know, if you're 35 years old and you care more about materialistic things than protecting your daughter, I have two daughters. I'm going to call you out on it. I'm going to call you, a pe not necessarily call you a piece of shit, but I'm going to call you a piece of shit. And you just got to challenge these people. And if, you, if you're afraid to challenge them, you know, get out of your comfort zone. Start challenging all of them. Exactly. That's the one thing. Um, um, respond back to you, John. Is, where's Peter? I think Peter on here, isn't he? Peter, are you on? Hey, yeah, Peter, I'm here. Not, yep. Oh, here he is. So Peter and I, we actually went to a, cust a couple of customer homes. Um, what was it? Friday, right, Peter? Yeah, Friday. What do you feel like you picked up the most? Well, the most that is gonna is the way you build rapport, connect with clients. Is that's the biggest mm -hmm. difference between what we're doing? I think I kind of just don't do it, and you do it super well. So that's the biggest difference I think that I picked up. But you realize that if you guys connect with the client, but let me ask you this, Peter: Did you feel that I was very direct with them? Was I afraid of them? Was I being shy at all, or was I being very direct? Yeah, very direct. That's all it is. Just be very, very direct, guys. Don't, don't be afraid to hurt somebody's feeling. Because guess what? If they're serious about buying, they're going to buy. If they're not, no matter how good you are, they're not going to get it. And here's, how, here's matter, one. Yeah. Oh, my bad. Go ahead. Sorry. Here's one little tip that I do when I door knock. Or even, even when you know a client answers the door that I have an appointment for. The first thing I do is I put my foot up on that threshold where the door is open and when the door meets the threshold. So they can't close the door on my face. If they do, it's just hitting my foot. I always put my foot in the house, like on the threshold, asserting myself up front. And I believe I talked to Dan about it and he was asking what I do. And I told him that little, that little step. And he goes, it's kind of huge. You're kind of taking like the authority position right then and there. Like, not super conspicuous. You're just putting your foot up there so that they can't slam it on you. And you're talking to them directly and saying, hey, you know, I'm with the benefits office. Do you have five minutes for a quick review? We have to get this information out to you. You know, no one was able to get a hold of you. I see the kitchen table. Let's go sit down. You know, little things like that, wordplay, you know, just, just asserting yourself a little bit into the doorway goes a long way. Yep. It's how Do you, you get that. a lot of objections? Do I? Yeah, 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 do you I get got, a lot of objections on the phone? I get object I get all the same objections. Um, the only one that I didn't really get on here was uh, uh what company are you with? Um but I mean all the objections that you see up there, I see I hear it all the time. And I don't care what objection you're giving me. I'm telling you I'm coming over. If you want it to stop, I'm the manager. I can make it stop. I put myself in that authority position. And if you want something to stop, you're gonna have to let me come over there in order for it to stop. 
And once I'm in the door, it's game over. Yeah. Another thing that people do uh, that I like is if you know there's an objection you get a lot, address it before they do. Like they pick up the phone. Hello. Hey, Bob. Uh, uh, this is Brian from the benefits office. Hey, listen, I know you're busy, but, um, and just start out that way. So they're not going to say to you later, I'm busy. Yeah, I know. I told you, I know you're busy, you know? So you're saying, I know you're busy. And so that puts that out of their mind. You know, I'm going to take, I know you're busy. This is going to take 20 seconds. I just, you know, and, and cause a lot of times when you call people, they think that you are going to go through the whole policy with them right then and there, that it's going to be a long call. They don't realize that we're setting an appointment with them. So when they say I'm busy, they have 60 seconds or they wouldn't have answered the phone. What they might not have is 20 minutes, 30 minutes at that exact moment. And that's what they're worried about, you know? So, Hey, I know you're busy. This is going to take 60 seconds it is a great way, like a great line for the beginning of the call. Same thing when entering the house. So like, as we're walking to the, you know, kitchen table, because I always say kitchen table or I walk there myself, I'm looking at the walls. I'm asking the client, hey, so I deal with a lot of final expense. How have you been feeling lately? You know, just ask them little questions on the way over, kind of understand. Like someone will be like, oh, yeah, you know, my uh, my diabetes has been really, you know, taking its toll on me lately and stuff like that. You kind of get a little bit of information out of them on the way over to the table, you know, build that rapport from the second you walk in the house. All right. I see a whole bunch of grandchildren. I know I'm going am, am family legacy. Now, you know, she's got 12 grandchildren. It looks like up on the wall. How you been feeling lately, Mary? You know, how you, how you been holding up the last couple of months? Ask these little questions. Cause they're get, old people fuck they're gonna start telling you their entire life story because they don't have anybody that they talk to you know they're gonna be like oh yeah you know the cholesterol medication really hasn't been helping me lately like they're just gonna let you know everything right then and there now you know now you're sitting down you remember all that write it down you know start working into the rapport you know start just asking questions literally our job is just to ask questions that's literally what we do exactly being smooth with it being you know you don't, you don't want to go in there and just be like, hey, why, why I'm here? You don't want to just do that, okay? You want to kind of assume why you're there just by building that report with them. So if I'm sitting with, with Corey and we're talking about, you said you have two, two daughters, Corey, right? Yep. Okay. So I'm sitting with Corey and him and I were talking and we're, ha- you know, our first five minutes we talked about, hey, you, you like football. Uh, I like football too, let's say, even though I don't like American football much, but let's say I, I like them. Okay, we're talking about American football here. And, uh, you know, now we're just, you know, we talk about football and then I see his two little daughters, right? I'm like, okay, so Corey, I assume we're, we're doing this to protect those two little angels you have, correct? And just by, you know, doing that, I'm just earning Corey trust. You know, that report that I built in the first five minutes, you know, earning Corey trust. So, when, I come, when it comes down to actually setting up an application, doing the um, asking for a kind of run number, social secure number, it's easier to actually collect that because I'm already in the process of earning the trust. I got an interesting call today. I was actually making calls and I got a call that says spam, right? And I was going to, I actually wanted to pick up and say spam. And I said spam. And the guy was like, he made it the transition is so smooth that I kept him on the phone and I was like, put my guards down to listen to him because he says, no, this is Elizabeth, right? I'm not a spam. I'm not telemarketing. I'm just getting back regarding this information I got on your mortgage, you know, and he, he was so smooth and slow and he kept me on it, but he didn't have a break in between. So when you break the ice or kept it very personal, they will stay on to listen to you. So that was one guy got me. He's like, I'm not a telemarketer. I'm not calling to sell you anything. I don't do that. So, you know, if we can just get them on, on the good side and break the ice, it keeps them listening and you can basically book the appointment that way. Yeah, and most definitely. And what I like to do is when I get those calls is tell them everything they're doing wrong and then tell them to try again later. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, you yeah, might you as well work. recruit them, right? Yeah, you need to work on your script, man. Do you want some help? <laughs> 
I actually, I actually just had a, a call. Um, you guys might have covered this objection. I've been kind of in and out during my calls. Um, did you guys cover anything about when people tell you to send it in the mail? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, I'm yeah. the information. I'm coming. I, can't, I don't fit in your mail. So very quick. You said I want to yeah. right? Yeah. Everybody's different. I work with 20 different companies, Mary. Uh, in order for me to get this information out to you, I got to ask you a certain amount of questions make sure you're not strapped down to a hospital bed. Now, are you working disabled retired? Yeah, exactly. Um, like it didn't happen. Yeah, yeah, I, and that's okay. pretty much how I every objection. Yeah, uh huh. Okay, Mary. Yeah, uh huh. Perfect. No reason for my call. Now, do you have any doctor's appointments tomorrow? Um, do you guys ever lie to build rapport, like quote unquote lie? Um, we did this a lot in the auto industry. I used to own every car or knew someone that did. Um, in a sense, when I'm building rapport, you know, if somebody likes soccer, ugh, or baseball, like I'll pretend. Um, you know, I just oh, yeah, try to, I try to recognize yep. certain things and I'll, I'll lie about it. Yeah. Um, it's not so much lying. It's just, you know, trying to be friendly or resonating with them on a certain level. Um, but I always try to defer cause I never want to get caught in the lie. So like, if I see that they're a huge baseball fan and they're like, did you see the game last night? I'll be like, no, I didn't watch the game. Um, I was too busy, but yeah, like, like certain things like that, building rapport. Yeah. You know, I do that with everyone. I, I'm not a people person. I, I hate the average person. And when I'm out in public with people, yeah, I uh, pretend that I like hey, certain Corey, things. Hey, <laughs> Corey, I got, I got a good one for you. I got a good one for you. I did that actually with football. And again, I don't know a lot about football, guys. Okay. And I'm sitting with this client. He asked me, like, what do you think about this player? I can't, I can't remember what player was it. I can't remember what player was it. And I'm um, actually looking at the... Um, he was like, what do you think of this player? And I was like, I don't know. I don't want to hurt your feeling. What do you think? <laughs> and reverse yeah. it right back. So eventually, you know, I can't remember what he said. And that's what I agreed with him. Man, and most of the time, yeah. about. Most of the time I yeah. have Google up on a different tab. So I can like, if they ask me a question, I'll just quickly fucking type something in just to see, like kind of get like, like, Hey, have you ever seen this movie? I'll just type it in and be like, Oh yeah. It's the last movie with Brad Pitt. Right. Yeah. Like just like little stuff like that. It goes a long way. You just kind of have to know how to navigate and, like little things like that can go a long way. Like always having your Google tab open. If they ask you a question that you don't know, it's as simple as, you know, kind of, you know, acknowledge them a little bit, type it in real quick. They don't know what you're typing, type it in, pause for a little bit. Be like, Oh yeah. Yeah. You were saying this. Yeah. I, you know, that's that movie with Brad Pitt. Oh, yeah. and, and you don't always have to agree with them either. Like people like a little bit of like controversy, you know, it keeps people engaged too. So Yep. All if I see someone has a flag like the Steelers flag up on the wall or something like that, it doesn't matter who it is. I'll look at it and I'll be like, "Oh, Patriots fan, huh?" And they'll be like, "Oh, yeah, you know, hardcore, born and raised." I'll go, "All right, well, I'm not going to charge you any extra for that." <laughs> you know? Yeah, and, and like exactly, dude. And like I, I don't know about you guys, but you know, politics are huge up here in the Northeast for some odd reason. You know, they bring up politics, and you know, I, I'm not very political. In a sense, um, you know, I used to use, and I always say, like, look, I'm a veteran. What I, what, this is what I do like. This is what I don't like. But as for commander in chief, I don't think it's the greatest. Um, and I just, you know, I fight them a little bit. And then, like, they actually like that. I actually had a client. Um, what, what was it? Yeah. So they were like, oh, uh, it was, it was a black couple. And, you know, with the BLM and everything that's been going on lately, um, they started like asking me questions. And I'm like, you know what? No, I'm from an area where there really isn't many black people. And we got into a conversation, like a normal conversation about, well, this is what we think. And this is what I think. And they were like, you know what? It's funny you say that because when you come into our area, we're scared of you. And I'm like, that's fucking funny because you know same thing vice versa like we don't it's not you're not used to it so like conversating and, and getting uncomfortable even with uncomfortable conversations about politics or or race or anything like that just talk to them you know have a discussion like an adult and they tend to like you a little bit more they tend to trust you a little bit more and at the end of the day you know that lady was like you know that was a really good conversation i got to hear your side you got to hear my side and you know now we're on our way and we're protected yep. so like just build the rapport, whatever it is. You don't have to be an expert on it. Let people tell no, you, you about their lives. 
Yeah. I was walking into somebody's house and they said, the guy said, well, I'm not buying anything from some white dude who shows up at my door, <laughs> you know? And it just, oh man, that opened the conversation. Uh, and by the time I left, he was like, I don't remember what he said, but he's like, oh, I don't care if they're 10 or $20 uh, less a month. I'm not going with anybody else. I was like, bam, you know? So, yeah, it's not, totally. it's not what you say, it's how you say it. And, and over the phone, and all right, back to the phones real quick. It's real simple, guys. 450 plus dials a, a day, 75 to 100 brand new leads every dial day. Have your dial tracker. Ask questions to clear the schedule. Acknowledge, answer, ask. Tell them you're coming over. Tie the appointment down. Move on. That's it. There we go. Okay, they're very simple. Yep, that's it. Did, nice. it, did it take you all day to book 19 appointments, Corey, or do you just like that good from the start? No, I, um, you know, I think my first like month, month or two, I was dialing from, you know, eight to about five, six o'clock at night. Um, and what I used to start off was because I wasn't coming in here with a whole bunch of money, I was actually dialing. And this is huge. And this is something that I would, I would give you guys aged mortgage protection are two dollars a piece i bought as many aged mortgage protection as i could because i was going to get every objection known to man with those aged mortgage protections and if i could book 10 15 20 30 appointments with those one to three month olds are going to be no problem i got my reps in i dialed you know 200 leads every single dial day with those with those aged mortgage protection which allowed me to get a lot better with my objections. And then I, I was able to utilize the review. Like, hey, I understand you filled this out three years ago. A lot of stuff has changed. A lot of premiums are going down for more coverage. This is the whole purpose of this call is because it's a review. Now, what time do you get home from work typically? You know, aged, don't look at it as, oh, you know, they're aged. Aged mortgage protection are beautiful. These people, their premiums are, you know, their house value. They don't owe as much now. They, they, a whole bunch of stuff with the age mortgage is something has happened. Go in there and give them a review. See if you can save them 50, 60, 75 bucks a month. See if you can get them more coverage. You know, use that review line. Now you're going to be able to get every objection for cheap. Get your reps in for cheap. 100 leads are going to cost you 250 bucks. That's really cheap. Anyway, guys, well, I'm going to be hitting, um, I have another training here in the office at two o'clock. But um, in general, do you guys have any questions for me? Why don't you like football? <laughs> I'm putting me a spot there, aren't you? <laughs> Dude, I don't know why the heck are you guys calling football and you hold it in your hands for God's sake, okay? <laughs> <laughs> football is soccer, okay? That, that's a real football. I'm, where I came from, we play soccer. We call, we call that football. We don't call an actual football that you hold in your hand and run with it, and you call it football. I have no idea why. Because <laughs> we're, we're American, and we wanted, to take exactly. the, we, we wanted to take the greatest sport in the world and make it our uh -huh. own and make it better. <laughs> exactly. I see that. Uh-huh. <laughs> anyway, guys, I got to get to my next appointment. <laughs> all right guys good luck all right guys Keep hey, thank you all by the way for attending the trainings and um you know i appreciate you all and yes we we got some time to kill it let's let's make a lot of appointments today um yes. elizabeth i think you're the host